On today's Locked On Texans podcast, the injuries keep piling. How can the Houston Texans overcome the injuries and the Texans' explosive plays? While this year is a whole lot different from the previous two. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, 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 welcome. Bring it in. Sit on down. Open your hmm. ears to this Wednesday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part, of, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. To all of our new listeners and viewers at home, wherever you are, thank you for checking us out for today. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast, and follow us on X slash Twitter at Locked On Texans. Um, I am your Texans football analyst, John, some sports guy, Hickman. And of course, joining me as always is the man with the plan, ear to the streets at the NRG every day. Your Texans credential media member, Sports Illustrated's own Cody Davis. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Here's CJ Stroud. No <laughs> win rookie of the year, which I think is a wrap. But can he win MVP? Mm. How can the Houston Texans stay explosive as they look to take on Cincinnati? After that, the Cardinals, they have a real shot at making the playoffs. But the biggest storylines right now surrounding the Houston Texans, once again, it seems oh, like this is a daily, uh, a daily conversation, a weekly conversation, it seems like here on the Locked on Texans podcast. And around the city, Cody, is the injuries that continue mm. to pile up. As of right now, after Sunday's game, Hassan Ridgeway is now out for the season uh, due to an injury. And now that leaves Houston with Kurt Heinish, Khalil Davis, who recently received praise from head coach D'Amico Ryans, Malik Collins, and if he can return from his knee injury, Sheldon Rankin. So, Cody, what's going on? Yeah, you know, and Hassan Ridgeway is one of several guys who are – actually banged up and we don't know what the future is going to hold from those guys and as you guys know today is wednesday which means later on today depending on when you hear this podcast we will be out there at the houston texans training facility and taking roll call to see which players are out there and which players who are not out there and john if we can just go down the list when you just take a look at the injuries that took place on sunday against the tampa bay buccaneers you got jimmy ward i'm not expecting to see him because he went down with a hamstring injury hopefully it is not as bad as the Derrick stingley jr hamstring because we have officially surpassed a month since Derrick stingley has been out and I gave you guys an update last week when I asked Coach D'Amico Rhines about whether or not there has been any type of update he can share about the injury. And last week he told me things have been progressing for Darius Stingley, but at the same time, we still do not anticipate to see Stingley on the field no time soon. All I can tell you is, according to our good friend Aaron Wilson over at KPRC, he did say that Darius Stingley Jr. could possibly be back towards the end of this month. So hopefully if things continue to progress, we can see Darius Stingley Jr. back on the field at some part at the end of this month. But along with Jimmy Ward, you have MJ Stewart, who also went down with a shoulder injury. John Mechie also left the game early with a rib injury. And then you also have Will Anderson Jr., I didn't see Will Anderson get hurt on Sunday, but there was a moment where he was in the blue medical tent. So those are the names that we're definitely going to keep an eye out on for later on today. And of course, the biggest name surrounding whether or not he's going to be in practice or not is Damian Pierce. As everybody right. know, he missed all the practice last week due to a knee injury. And, you know, we haven't heard any type of update. So I'm not going to lie to you. That is the only downside in terms of the excitement that took place against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A phenomenal game. A lot of people would say one of their favorite um, games in franchise history. I consider it <laughs> top five in my book, but it, it's just painful because as of right now, the Texans, at the time of this recording, they are in a hunt for the playoffs. Let me repeat that again. At 4-4, four and four, the Houston Texans are in a hunt for the playoffs. However, when you take a look at these injuries, John, I'm just a little nervous if 
they will fall short of a playoff run due to the fact that a lot of these guys, especially Jimmy Ward, are key contributors to what they're trying to do. Yeah, and I look at Hassan Rizway, uh, you know, to address him really quick. He's only been featured in three games this season, only played in 62 snaps. I would classify, I wouldn't classify this as a big loss for Houston. Um, and with a $3.7 million in cap space, I necessarily wouldn't expect Houston to sign a player outside of the building, given what we've seen from Nick Asirio, which is why we, we got to look at Houston re signing, bringing back Grady Arnold back to this team. Now, with Jimmy Ward out, MJ Stewart also suffered an injury on Sunday as well. That Couple gives a guy, guy, Eric Murray, mm. Eric Murray, right? So, Grady Arnold is a guy that gives Houston some familiarity on what they want to do defensively and can kind of step in and know his role on the backside of that defense in terms of the secondary. Maybe does, maybe Houston does look to bring up a practice squad player to kind of help replace Hassan Ridgeway, uh, boost that defensive line. Kerry Hyder is a player Houston could bring up, uh, has some experience under D'Amico Ryans from San Fran. He's a versatile d lineman that can play the B-gap, can be impactful in limited action for this team, and hopefully Houston does get Sheldon Rankins back. But if not, I think Houston will go the Houston route, and that's mm. just bringing somebody that they already know up. Uh, if they do choose to go on the outside, I do like Akeem Hicks. I also like Matthew Ioannidis, who uh, played for the Washington Commanders. Now, when we look at Derek Stingley being out and it's in his impact, Derek Stingley has been out with his hamstring injury since week two of the season. He was set to return for the Panthers game. Still no real update. Cody mentioned that he's been progressing, which is mm-hmm. good, from according to D'Amico Ryans, of course. Um, but I think it's time to have a conversation just of how important it is for Houston to get Derek Stingley back. If not Stingley, immediately it may be time to call up Jason Verrett. First, first of all, Steven Nelson has played well in his absence, allowing – just around 54 yards per game, only one TD, and so has Griffin. But it's obvious this team needs Derek Stingley out there if they're going to make a real run, which is a potential. I know in past years we would look at Dr. Strange and that meme and look at all of the potential outcomes. This is a potential outcome for Houston that they can make a run to the playoffs. This is very concerning, but I think it is time for Houston to see what Jason Verrett has, if anything, moving forward to give Houston some depth at that position. D'Amico Ryan's called Verrett a very talented guy who thrives in man coverage, believes that Verrett is one of the best corners he's been around. So I think that it's been three weeks since Houston signed Jason Verrett. He has that injury history. And honestly, guys, if it was not for the injury history, we would look at Jason Verrett similar in a similar light. We looked at Patrick Peterson. That's how good of a cornerback I thought that Verrett was coming out of TCU. He had that one still a year where I believe he made the Pro Bowl. Yeah, but I think yeah. it's time for Houston. If, they, if they're not going to get Stingley, which they won't this week, seems like they have to bring in some extra guys up because, as you can see, Steven Nelson and Shaq Griffin, who has played well, it seems like the amount of attention that they're getting now that Derek Stingley is out is starting to kind of wear down on that secondary. Not calling them scrubs, not disrespecting them in no sense. Steven Nelson, I think, has played good. Uh, I'm glad Houston brought him back. And Shaq Griffin is a guy that kind of shut me up. He's oh. played well in his in his role. But it's time to add a third guy to that mix. They were supposed to be the second and third guy, fourth guy, maybe when you look at Shaquille Griffin. Derek Stingley was supposed to be the guy to hold it down. But he's been out since week two. Houston has to, um, they have to look at that situation and understand that we got to make a decision moving forward until we can get Stingley back on the field because his absence, I think, will continue to hinder the possibility of how good this defense can be. Listen, guys, you should not have to worry about how you're buying tickets when you're looking for tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, theory events near you with killer last-minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, one of my favorite features, and the best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets and make it super simple, super easy, which is what we love now, right? We don't like to think too much. We like to just go in, make a decision, and move on with our lives. Game time has tickets, or deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour after the event starts. 
okay, so like the event starting, you're at home, you're thinking to myself, you know what, I'm bored. Uh, maybe I go to the next event. Maybe I go to the one next month. No, you could do it right now because they have tickets, deals on tickets right up to the event and even an hour after. Flash deals, sponsor deals, whatever. <laughs> Listen, they got the discounts all over at Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I don't change anything after I just had a team meeting. I told the guys, hey, congrats, it's over. Cincinnati, let's go to work. Like, no, we don't care. Tampa Bay is over, it's done with. Everybody's going to pat you on the back, say you're the best in the world. And as Coach Saban calls it, it's rat poison, right? Nobody cares. It's on to the next game. We don't, Tampa Bay game is not going to help us win, all right, Cincinnati. So everything, all of our preparation, everything that we're focused on right now is on the Cincinnati. Man, that sounds like a coach. That sounds like a coach with mm. one goal in mind. Mm. That's getting to the postseason, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it gotta be, man. And look, I'm glad Coach D'Amico Ryan's had that mentality mentality because the Cincinnati Bengals, I understand that the season started all kind of shaky for them. Joe Burrow looked like he was battling through injuries. However, mm -hmm. they have won five of their last six games, and they are looking like the championship contending team that we all thought was going to be in consideration at the start of the season. Um, and I understand Coach D'Amico Ryan does not want to look back at the past. However, John, I think it's very important for him to do so, only because he and Bobby Sloat, they have to find some type of way for this offense to stay explosive because when you take a look at every single game where Bobby Sloyd, Coach D'Amico Ryan's let CJ Stroud and his offense go out there and air it out and go out there and let them boys go to work, let CJ Stroud cook, they have eclipsed over 20 points in almost every single matter of fact in all of those games. And of course, you go back and you take a look at what they did against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers second half, that team put up 29 points <laughs> so no I, I think yeah with no kicker so it's very important for this organization for this team to find a way to stay consistent and of course that starts with Bobby Sloyd following the win I had an opportunity to talk to wide receiver Noah Brown who had a career day by the way and this is what he had to say when I asked him what changed with Bobby Sloyd in the second half um, just, you know, I, I think he, in the, in the second half, he kind of just, you know, opened it up a little bit, just put put the ball in the air. Um, you know, we also still ran the ball, but just, you know, seeing what's working and what's not and being willing to adjust and, and on the fly. And I think that's one of Bobby's best things, and he did it well. A couple things, man. Uh, yards of separation on reception for Texas receivers per next-gen stats. The league average was 2.94. Noah Brown, 3.08. Nico Collins, 4.2. Dalton Schultz, 4.56. And Tank Dale, just uh, uh, out of his 11 targets, he caught six for 114 and two TDs. They couldn't even list his. And so I think for Houston, the wide receivers and the, the pass catchers in general did a very good job of creating separation against a weak secondary. We're going into that game. That's what we talked about. We talked about Houston going out there and creating those explosive plays, which is something the Tampa Bay Buccaneers – have allowed throughout this season so far under Todd Balls, which isn't necessarily two things that you would put together, Todd Balls, Todd, Todd Balls in a defense that's allowing that many explosive plays. And also the Houston Texans right now, offensively sitting at four and four, they are seventh in yards, third in yards per attempt in terms of uh, C.J. Stroud, uh, third in yards per game, seventh in TDs, first in interceptions, fourth in pass rate. So clearly they're – superpower is flowing through C.J. Stroud. Hmm. So we look at how Houston can stay explosive moving forward, and they're going up against a uh, Cincinnati Bengals team that once that offense gets rolling with Joe Burrow and them boys, 
Now, you can have a shootout on your hand. Houston has a quarterback that is able to go out there and continue to when the ball is in his hands to allow him to be the Superman for this offense. Again, seventh in yards, third in yards per attempt, 30 yards per game, and you have receivers, you have playmakers that can go out there, maybe not as consistent as you would like them to, but on their receptions, they can go out there and make plays. So that, that's, that goes hand in hand. You look at Coach Amico Ryan saying you don't win in our league without a quarterback who can make those type of plays. So, again, <clears throat> talk about, you know, the run game throughout the entire year. It's evident that they won four games because of them being able to go out there and succeed through the air. That's it. That's the fact of the matter. And mm-hmm. to look to give you guys a little bit more perspective on this, last year through nine weeks, the Houston Texans had 46 explosive plays on the year. This year, right now, they nearly have 10, they have 10, 10 more. So they're sitting at like 55 right now, explosive plays. Hmm. And majority of those explosive plays last year came from the run. And when you look at the run explosive plays compared to the passing. For the run, is 10 or more yards. For the passing, it's 20 or more yards through the air on the ground. Last year, a lot of those plays were on the ground. This year, a lot of those plays for Houston is through the air. As we know, the Houston, Texas run game hasn't been efficient at all. So, again, it all comes back to flowing your offense through your quarterbacks, tr- through your quarterback, trusting your quarterback, trusting your receivers to be able to get open and make plays down the field and allowing an offense to be explosive that way. And I think Sunday's matchup, the Steelers matchup, the second half versus the Colts, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars matchup, those were all perfect um, opportunities for people to see that, hey, this is the evidence. When the ball is in C.J. Stroud's hand, this is what he can do. This is how we win games. This is how Houston has been able to go out there and win four games. And so how Houston can win these games moving forward to stay explosive, Flow through your quarterback, which is what Houston has been able to do. And as of right now, the Houston Texans are a top 10 team in big plays offensively. That speaks volumes to how good Bobby Sloak has been when he is consistent with his play calling and trusting his quarterback to make the play. How good C.J. Stroud has been when he's consistent with his arm talent and all natures of the game. When you look at his arm talent, what he can do, accuracy, anticipation, arm strength, and how good – the pass catchers have been when the opportunities have been there for Houston. They have a shot to beat the Bengals. They just got to continue to win how they've been winning, and that's through the air. Plain and simple. So, listen, I know Sunday, that second half came out of there. Some of y'all probably was looking around like, man, I'm hungry. Uh, I don't necessarily want to spend no money right now. I'm kind of in the game. I'm kind of not in the game. But then you saw Noah Brown catch that pass for 75 yards and took it to the house. Your eyes at that point were glued to the TV. You didn't want to leave. Well, that's where DoorDash comes in. Did the game go to timeout? Time to order with DoorDash. Did CJ Stroud just do something ridiculous? Well, and you don't want to leave your house. It's time to order with DoorDash. Whenever that clock stops or whenever those players pop, it's time to order with DoorDash. So you don't have to leave the house. It's time to pull out your Lucky Charm jersey. Order your favorite app, snack on DoorDash, because it's football season. And, again, you do not want to leave the house. You want to make it easy on you because you don't want to miss out on the comeback. Imagine missing out on that comeback because you went to McDonald's and you didn't use the DoorDash app. Right? Imagine that. Right now, get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more dollars on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app, just enter code LOCKED23, LOCKED23, excuse me, L-O-C-K-E-D, 23 again download the doordash app uh get they get the ten dollar 50 percent off up to ten dollar value when you spend 15 or more dollars on your first order when you download the doordash app into code lock 23 welcome back in ladies and gentlemen to this wednesday installment of locked on texans um i do want to mention this really quick because we didn't talk about it in the first segment but uh kicker kaimi Fairbell who went down with a quad injury against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He will be out for Sunday's game against the Cincinnati Bengals. And the Texans have signed Matt Amendola, 
Claypool for a short-term replacement, according to our good friend Aaron Wilson over at KPRC. So um, I don't think Darrell Gumbawale is going to have an opportunity <laughs> to be the emergency kicker kick once kick again. Kick, kick your 50s, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, kick your 50s. But um, uh, speaking of a good friend in the business, I want to give a special shout out to three special guys. I'm pretty sure all of you Texans listeners and fans out there know every Monday through Friday from 10 to 2, Landry Locker, John Lopez, and our guy, Figgy Fig. Figgy Fig. Hosts of In the Loop. Really good show, by the way. Shout out to those guys. And they played around with this idea following the Texans' victory over Tampa Bay on Monday. And, I, John, I just think it's funny that, that, we, that we should play around with it too. I think it's safe to say C.J. Stroud, without a shadow of a doubt, is going to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. But let's take it a step further, especially if they make the playoffs. Should C.J. Stroud be in consideration for league MVP? I'm glad we're talking about this. So, get on my soapbox. Mm -hmm. As of right now, if we look across the league, if we could be honest, the two MVPs, most valuable players in the NFL right now, a wide receiver in Miami that goes by the name of Tyreek Hill, mm -hmm. and a wide receiver in Philadelphia that goes by the name of A.J. Brown. Those are, right wow. now, my two MVPs. And I'll take it a step further. I know this won't happen because... No Miles Garrett? Miles Garrett. I was just about to say, Miles Garrett... He's playing some phenomenal football right now, though I think TJ Watt may may have him beat. But those two guys are playing; they're balling out. But those are my two MVPs: Tyreek Hill and AJ Brown. There's no quarterback right now that has just simply blown me away. When you look at all 32 teams in the NFL, Patrick mm -hmm. Mahomes has struggled a lot this year. Jalen Hurts has regressed in in my eyes in some ways. Mm. Tua Tagovailoa cannot beat a team over 500. When you look at <clears throat> when you look at Josh Allen, he's Josh Allen. Lamar Jackson has had his moments, but overall, I think that's a very good put together team. And there's times like Sunday where I think Lamar only had one TD and they beat the team thirty eight to three. The defense is playing well. The run game is you know doing what they got to do. Um, who else would I? Joe Burrow, if they continue to play how they've been playing he as of late, then I think he can emerge as a favorite, but I got Tyreek and I got A.J. Brown. Now, if there was a quarterback right now hmm. who I think has been the most valued, let's take the let's let's take the P out, most valued. Hmm. Who has been the most valuable player <laughs> to a franchise in the last three years? 4-12, 4-13, 3-13-1. Hmm. That has been the Houston Texans records in the last three years. One of those years included Deshaun Watson. As of right now, in week nine, with nine weeks to go, the Houston Texans are now sitting at four and four. I just gave you guys the numbers. A top 10 offense in a lot of categories. Without a run game, by the way. Like, <laughs> a non-existent run game. One of the worst run games in the NFL. You can't tell me a player playing the quarterback position right now. Not overall, because Patrick Mahomes is like LeBron James at one point. He can win it every year if you want mm. to give it to him. Right? Right now, what quarterback is playing better than C.J. Stroud? This isn't a me, you know, hyping for him because we covered this team. It's just a fact. Justin a Herbert, I think Justin Herbert hasn't played to the best of his abilities. Neither has Dak Prescott, even, even though the last couple of games I think Dak has played good. Um, uh, who, who else? Again, mm, I, I thought Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence in now. Trevor Lawrence is for consideration. Guy. For consideration. Trevor, for consideration, but who beat Trevor Lawrence? Well, that is true. <laughs> who outperformed Trevor Lawrence? And if I think right now, can you get killed for this? I think Travis Etienne is the MVP of that offense. Mm, mm, this I team mean, doesn't move without CJ Stroud. They don't beat the Steelers without putting 30 points up. They don't beat 
the Jaguars without putting 30 points up. They don't beat these teams without C.J. Stroud going out there. They don't have this comeback historic fashion win without C.J. Stroud. He's the most valuable player at their quarterback position, I believe, in the NFL because of the circumstances. Makeshift offensive line, injuries here and there, run game non-existent. And at times, the criticism from an offensive coordinator for the play caller. C.J. is the MVP as a quarterback of the mm-hmm. NFL. But my two MVPs, guys, I can't lie, is Tyreek Hill and A.J. Brown. And I think this is the year the NFL needs to stop trying to give it and make it a quarterback award Thank and you. give it to the most valuable player. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's those two wide receivers. Now, in my opinion, if I had if I had an MVP vote right now, it's going to Miles Garrett because you got to take a look at everything that they've been going through in Cleveland, um, especially with the former franchise quarterback of this team and the fact that he still got them in consideration um, to make the playoffs and stuff. Man, Miles Garrett is having a phenomenal year. However, John, to your point, when you look at most valuable, Miles Garrett, that's on the defensive side of the ball. On the on, on the offensive side. <laughs> I would have to give it to CJ Stroud, man. Um, and honestly, I really do believe that it should be just like when we talk about coach of the year. If the Texans can make the playoffs mm. in year one, still in the early stages of their rebuild, one, first and foremost, I think D'Amico Ryan should definitely be um, coach of the year. I think, he's, um, I, I think he should be him coach or Dan of the year. Campbell right now. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the, given how bad the Texans have been these last couple of years, I think he should be – Coach of the year with or without making the playoffs. I really do believe that. Look, I wouldn't necessarily say he's he's going to win it, but he should definitely be in consideration. Yeah. And oh my God, John, can you believe? Like, let's say for the sake of this argument, he continues to do this. They got to make the playoffs. And like I said, they make the playoffs. He continues to perform. And I think it will be somewhat of a, of controversy because, like you say, the NFL has to stop giving these quarterbacks MVPs because if we keeping it 100, J.J. Watt should have at least two of them, if we're being honest. I'm tired but of it. Can you imagine if C.J. Stroud won an MVP in his first season? I can't even imagine that. That's I, I can't. I can't. I can't imagine it either. It but it's just like, man, but once again, ladies and gentlemen, just the fact that we're having this conversation about a Texan, a Texan quarterback being MVP, a conversation that did, that we I don't even think we ever had this with Deshaun. Oh, oh we, we, the thing with Deshaun was that last year that he won enough games because he had an MVP caliber year. Yeah, but yeah, also MVP look at, caliber. We, we talk about CJ Stroud, who could potentially be. I think he's a lock right now for Rookie of the Year. We're looking at Coach D'Amico Ryan's for being Coach of the Year. Mm-hmm. You know, I also want to look at Khalil Davis for comeback player of the year. Uh, I think he should be a candidate. By the way, D'Amico Ryan said that he's proud of Khalil. Was a big, had a big-time sack for us. Uh, been playing really well in the run game. Doesn't matter where you start. Uh, it only matters what you do with the opportunity. And, guys, remember, Khalil Davis actually played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That was a yeah. short time. But then he previously played for the USFL Stallions. So between Khalil Davis, I think his name should be Mention, I don't think he'd win because I think Joshua Dobbs right now is a clear cut winner of that award. Aaron Rodgers gonna to... win if he play one game, one yeah. game. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> Pat McAfee. Let, let him breathe a little bit, Pat McAfee. Oh, you breathe a little bit, Pat McAfee, <laughs> but um, don't choke too much. But I think Houston has some guys that came into this building and has really helped shift the culture. So we're looking at a lot of these national awards. It's everywhere because of the imprint of these players, man. So and coaches. So kudos to this franchise. After three long, terrible years, they're getting it right. Hmm. Thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Be sure to follow us on X, Twitter, whatever at Locked On Texans. Give me a follow at John underscore Hickman twelve. Also find me on the Bleach Report app under John Hickman. Uh, make sure that you subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texas podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, it's Cody C-O-T-Y D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.